There are hundreds and thousands of religions in the world, so we cannot agree on what the superior religion is. There are many political ideologies, so it's not safe for us to talk so much about politics. But when it comes to money, every human agrees that it is important. Yes, some people say it's the root of sin and evil, but these people still work 12 hours per day to look for it, meaning that deep within them, they know that money is good. Now, if we all agree that money is very important, why are so many people too lazy to learn how money works? Even for those who understand how it works, disciplining themselves to do what they already know they ought to do is another thing. So maybe if I can share with you a simple formula to help you build wealth, you could remember that formula and apply it to your life. Let me start with a personal story. A few weeks ago, I transferred some funds from one of my bank accounts into another one. For whatever reason, the bank I transferred to suspected that the amount I transferred was more than what I usually transfer, so they didn't allow the money to reflect on my company's account. That money was meant to be for an investment, so I was a little worried. But here is where I am going with my story. During the time I was waiting for the bank to allow me access to my money, I needed some money for my personal needs and to take care of my monthly budget. And even though I had more than enough money in other banks, I wouldn't touch those monies. But why? Why won't I touch the money that is mine simply because a bank pens the money I ought to use for investment? Here is the thing. My simple financial formula is ISS. Invest, save, and spend in that order. For more than one decade, the above formula has been my mantra and nothing will make me do the last before the first. The difference between the rich and the poor. Every rich person is selfish, not the way you mean it. Being selfish means that you like yourself more than other people and this is not necessarily a bad thing. For example, I have the freedom and liberty to buy new shoes, but buying that pair of shoes first when I make money means that I love someone more than myself and that is the shoe company. It's not a crime to buy a new phone, but buying a new phone first when you make money means that you like Apple and Samsung shareholders more than you like yourself. Unfortunately, that's what most people do and that's why they are poor. ISS means invest, save, then spend. If you follow this simple formula, your financial life will never remain the same. But I don't have money. Some people at this point in the video will tell me, but I don't have money. That's a good excuse, except that even when I didn't have money as I do today, I still did not spend until I invested. So many people think that since their income isn't enough, they can only wait till they earn more money before they can save or invest. There are two things I love to tell you here. First, the habit is more important than the act. All our lives is about habits and you don't wake up one day to form a new habit. If you don't save or invest when you earn $10, you won't do it when you earn $100 because humans don't just do things, we are products of habit. The second thing you have to understand is this. Some of the most important investments in life are cheap. They are called education and relationships. Forget the money. It's not that difficult to make. What is difficult is the education, experience and relationship. So if someone comes to me and tells me, I don't make so much money so there's no way I can save up $10,000 to invest, I'll tell you, invest 10% of all you earn into your financial education, buy books about money and entrepreneurship, start and try a new business that is cheap to start just for the experience, attend a seminar, conferences and other places where positive-minded people go. You don't need a lot of money to do the above three yet they are far more important than any other form of investment. I am talking from experience. All I am today can be directly traced to the relationships I had and the books I read. Absolutely every success I have comes from an idea I got from a conversation with someone or from reading a book. But it's not by accident. 
For about 15 years, I've consciously looked for ambitious people and make them my friends. I have invested my time, life and money into my financial education. The above two are not expensive so everyone can do them and that's the best place to start if you don't have a lot of money. Invest the little you have in your financial education and in your quality relationships. Then someone would say, but I don't usually have anything left after I spend on things I need. What you do first is what you do well. Some times ago, my wife lost her phone and she needed me to buy her a new one. Okay, that's not a problem but she had to wait. She started using a small phone while she waited for like 5-7 to seven weeks for me to get her a new one. She's used to such treatment so she never complains. But here is the funny part. My wife knows about every dollar I make and she knows that I have money to get her three new phones the day she lost her phone. But there's another issue. Investment and savings come first for us. All the time. This is how it goes. Whatever you do first is what you'll do exceptionally well. Study any worthwhile thing about productivity and you'll hear this. The first thing you do when you sit on your desk in the morning is what you'll do best in your day. Don't ever forget this. What you do first is what you'll do well. For most people, the financial formula is SSI. Spend, save, invest. The problem with this formula is that whatever you do first is what you'll do well. So most people spend well and then realize they simply don't have any money to save or invest. Derive joy from the growth of your fruit. One day, my mother told me, Stop giving me money until you have your own home. This statement bothered me to this day. I mean, why would my 73-year-old mother who had suffered all her life to raise her children still be concerned about the progress of those children against her own needs? So I realized something very important. Most parents derive the greatest joy of their lives not from the gifts their children give them but from the growth and progress of their children. Most times when people think they need everything their eyes see to be happy, they could have as well derived the same joy from seeing their fruits growing. For example, I derive great joy in giving people jobs. I derive great joy in starting a new business. I derive great joy in seeing my portfolio growing. Maybe as much joy as other people derive from spending all they earn on things. You can have them all later. Another thing I've heard a lot of people saying is why do I have to work so hard if I can have or buy everything I need? I get it. A part of us wants to enjoy the fruit of our labor. The problem with this is that your income can serve your life better if you stop seeing it as a fruit. Instead, see your income as a seed. The fruit is to be eaten while the seed is to be planted. When the fruit is eaten, that's it. It's gone. But when a seed is planted, it can grow and bring us a hundred times more than what we planted. Then we can eat as much as we want. Most people will never know what it means to have more than enough money because they never plant any seed. Believe me, you can later have them all. For a long time when I should have bought a car, I never did. By the time I was ready to buy a car, all I needed was my 15 days income. It was not a burden. It was like I was given. That's what I'm advocating for for those who like true freedom. Believe me, you can later have them all if only you'll invest and save before you spend. I hope this helps someone. We love you.